second, guys. So, uh, I'll explain. I'll explain this build path, and I'll, I'll I'll run you through how I read it. So, okay, first things first. The most important thing in your build is a weapon. When selecting your weapon, you should decide what stats fit your game plan. And obviously, you should go for something that's reasonable to obtain. Like, you can't just be like, alright, my build, I'm gonna get a Kelt. Because you don't have a Force Core, and you're not gonna be able to get a Force Core unless you have a weapon to kill something that's gonna drop a Force Core. So stuff like this is sort of off the table to begin with. It can be an optional thing to, switch in, to, ah, to swap into later. But to begin with, you need something that's gonna get you through the beginning of the game. And in case you don't get the good RNG drops, or, you know, a Wickeline kill, you need to be able to be carried by your purple weapon. So, in this situation, we're going to be playing a spell amp build, but it's sort of a tanky, mobility-based spell amp build. So our two real options are Elegance or, or Devil's Marksman. El Electron, Blast yeah, Electron Blaster is not really good for us because it's extra normal attack damage, its attack power isn't very high, um, its attack speed is really high. We don't really care about attack speed, we don't really care about extra normal. So that's sort of off the table. Magnum Boa isn't a bad choice, but we sort of don't care about the lifesteal. We're using our attack power just to improve our spells. We're not really caring that much about our auto attacks. Auto attacking is still a useful tool for us, but it's not our entire game plan. So we don't want to sacrifice movement speed or attack power for lifesteal. So that really just leaves us with Devil's Marksman or Elegance. Elegance is good because it has high attack power, a high movement speed, and a decent amount of vision range. And Devil's Marksman is good because it has spell amp. It also has a little bit of movement speed and a little bit of attack power. If you do the numbers, and I'm not going to do them right here because it would require two different customs to prove it, Devil's Marksman and Elegance are very similar in power when it comes to a spell amp character. Because for those who don't know, this game doesn't have an AP uh, attack power system like in League of Legends. Skills aren't just affected by skill amp. Skills are affected by attack power and then modified by skill amp. Every skill has an attack power ratio. Every skill in the game. Every skill that has like like every skill that does damage has an attack power ratio attached to it. If you go to the wiki, you can find the exact ratios. But yeah, you gotta trust me on this one. They all just have some sort of ratio. Um, so in that case, attack power actually matters almost as much as spell amp for a spell character. There's definitely situations where just the higher attack power weapon is a better option than the one that has spell amp attached to it. Uh, in this case, Devil's Marksman's hard to make, Elegance is easy to make, there's more movement speed on Elegance, the 95 attack power is comparable to Devil's Marksman's 40 spell amp, 30 attack power. We're gonna be going with Elegance. It's just the better pick. Um, Devil's Marksman used to be in a much better place. It had like 52, I think, spell amp, like a long time ago, something along those lines. It's been nerfed a bunch. It's a lot weaker than it used to be. Elegance is still just the better pick. Um, to move on from there, we have our helmet slot, which is kind of funny because helmets are below weapons, but on this list they're not. But anyway, we have our helmet slot. Um, I'm not going to go through each option and describe why we're not picking them. It really comes down to Moto Helm, Tac Ops Helm, and Imperial Crown. The key here is we want something that gives us Spell Amp and HP. These all give HP, but this one gives CDR, this gives more HP, and this gives Spell Amp. Uh, we're going to pick between these three, but we're not going to pick it yet because we have no reason to decide this or that. Uh, before we go too much further, we're going to notice our build path for Elegance is best taken Hospital Pond because that finishes it really quick. Alternatively, you can go Hospital Temple anywhere with a short rod. So it's between Hospital Temple and Hospital Pond because we need to get Laser Pointer and Feather and there's nowhere else you can get those two items in one zone. Um, so yeah, Hospital Temple or Hospital Pond. So we want items that fit into that build path as much as possible. Now the ammo difference doesn't matter like pretty much at all for a spellcaster you don't care about your ammo that much it matters more for things like sniper uh and i think ar as well i don't know if there's actually any ammo differences between the ars but yeah so what we need to find out is what benefits us going hospital first because hospital's fairly contested what other items can we get there that benefit our build and the first thing that should jump out to you is the fact that you can craft metal sheets or iron sheets in hospital. It's got scrap metal and hammers. Both of those are in hospital. So with these iron sheets, we can make a bunch of things that are actually quite good right now, like the EOD suit. EOD suit's a great 
uh, tool for any spellcaster. It's got the highest amount of CDR on a non-legendary. It's got SP regen. It's got 350 max HP, which is a shit ton of max HP. It also comes with some defense and normal attack reduction. So easy slam EOD suit fits this perfectly already. And we already have two iron sheets, so we might as well do something else with the iron sheet that also fits our game plan, which is sort of Shah Jahan. This gives us more attack power, which benefits both our auto attacks and our spells, like we already went over. It also gives us a lot more max HP, and it gives us some, some more normal attack damage reduction. Easy include, Shah Jahan and EOD go very well together. Very, very good options to put together, because it gives you a ton of HP to work with. And as a spellcaster, you're already kind of squishy, so having this giant HP buffer is really useful. And the other like extra stats in addition to the HP benefit our build a lot. Uh, so now we have our core three items. We build it in roughly hospital, temple, and then we just need a windbreaker. So we can go school, uptown, or hotel afterwards. Any of those are options we can take. Um, and we'll figure it out based on the other items we need. So what else can we do? Our head slot between these three items. Let's say we pick tech ops. How easy is it to finish tech ops? See, we're, we're still fit, we're missing five items. So Tac Ops is already looking like it's not a great option. So maybe not Tac Ops. What about, let's see, Moto Helm. Oh, we're just missing the binoculars and the bike helmet, but that would require us to go, well, maybe school. Maybe Moto Helm's not a bad choice. However, Imperial Crown, which gives us a lot of spell amp, which we're kind of lacking on damage right now. We'll see, now we're just missing a pickaxe and it gives us the option to go to Pond after Temple in case we don't get any of our three hammers that we need for our, or two hammers that we need for our previous items. So, seems like kind of a good option. I like the crown in this one, so I'm sticking with the crown. Leg, we're playing Spell Amp. We already have access to slippers in our starting zone, because those are in hospital. So really it's between straight jackets and ice shoes. I think both are good options. I don't think there's any reason why you should necessarily choose one over the other. Um, we can get paper in temple, we can get cloth in temple. So straight jackets are just missing lighters, but lighters are hard to get in a third or fourth zone. Um, so really it's between these two. I put straight jackets in it just so I don't have to worry about Tree of Life, but if I don't get my lighter, you'll often see me swip, swap, bleh, swap these out for Glacial Shoes, because these are good options too. Um, Stat-wise, you'll notice they're actually almost identical. Like, you can compare them right there on my screen. They both give you SP regen, they both give you movement speed, they both give you Spell Amp. The only difference is that Glacial Shoes is slower in combat and faster out of combat, so it's good for chasing when the enemy is, is afraid of you. Whereas straight jackets are better in combat if you need to be moving around a lot while you're fighting. Aya has good movement skills. She has a good dash. She has a good uh, moving reload to dash again. Those are good for pistols, so we don't have to worry too much about our in combat movement speed. But again, I'm still going to go for straight jackets just so I don't have to worry about getting uh, the tree of life because that can be a pain in the ass. And finally, just our accessory. This is kind of spicy. I go with Buddha Saria because we already have a nice, clean four zone build. And while Fan would be the better option here, I don't necessarily want to go to Avenue because that would add another zone. It's probably going to be picked over. I don't want to waste time there. Budasaria, it gives us cooldown reduction and spell amp. It kind of fits what we want. And we can build it entirely in Temple. And that gives us a nice little like three zone damage boost right there. You see right there, we have Elegance, Shah Jahan, and Budasaria done just in our first two zones. And that's really nice. So that's it. That's the build. That's how I came up with it. It's just starting with a weapon, starting with a game plan, and figuring out what pieces slot into it as you go. Um, finding your core items and sort of building around it is the best thing you can do. And honestly, these builds aren't rigid. You don't have to stick to them. If for some reason you can't finish your Imperial Crown, there's other options. You could take, you know, a Moto Helm. You could just like go around and find, you know, a bike helmet and binoculars and just make a moto helm. Maybe you find a body, it's got attack ops on it. Just slam the attack ops. There's nothing wrong with, with taking placeholder items until you finish your build. And even if you don't finish your build, stats are stats. As long as they're not completely conflicting, they should be fine. Is there a priority list after the weapon? Not really, no. Um, again, the, your priority list after your weapon should be whatever stats in your build matter the most. And to me, it's like HP, because I already have a lot of damage and I'm a squishy character, so I prioritize HP high, I prioritize, um, yeah, so basically Shah Jahan. That's my priority, finishing my Shah Jahan. And from there, finishing my crown, because that's a lot of more, a lot more HP and a lot more power for me. So sorry if that's not like the most 
uh, I don't know, in-depth description of how you can build, because this is just applying to this one build, but it's the same mindset. I don't have a script for this, I'm not really like preparing anything for this. In general, weapon first, always weapon first, or at least like, if you're not going weapon first, you should at least have a game plan that lets you survive until you finish your weapon, but dying with a blue or green weapon in your inventory to someone who rushed a purple weapon will happen way more than you think. Unless you have like insane food and a crazy efficient build path, like here, I'll show you a build path that doesn't give a shit about weapon first. Uh, this. Doesn't give a fuck <laughs> about finishing weapon first. This finishes weapon in the third area, but that's because it can go bam, 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 four items done. And then you just go for us and finish your, your shoes. Doesn't give a fuck about finishing weapon first. But this is an exception. This is not the rule. If not weapon first, rush movement speed maybe? Yo, Drano, thanks for the sub. Thanks for the three month sub. Thank you, man. I saw you guys were playing Among Us. I, I wish I... Or at least I saw that server was playing Among Us. Kinda wish I was playing right now. Kashuni, thanks for the sub also. I appreciate it. You guys are so generous, thank you. Oh, I'm glad that could help. Yeah, I, I can't stress it enough. Building in this game is is just... It's all about the pieces. It's just putting stuff together. Um, starting with an idea, starting with a plan. Saying like, I want to make a fucking, you know, uh, Ancient Bolt build. Well, where can I build Ancient Bolt? Sorry, let me get rid of these. Where can I build Ancient Bolt? Uh, well, this looks good, Alley Archery. And that's how an Ancient Bolt build gets built, you know? It's just all about, like, having a core idea, finding the pieces that flesh out that build. The weapon should be your build around almost every time. 